Hello and welcome to Ecoholics. In this lecture, we will understand about the budget 2020 and 21. So this is an important discussion and this budget plays an important role for the examination purpose. So here we'll see the important graphs. So graphs are important here. So first of all, this budget profile is very, very vital to understand. First of all, this is the budget size. It means budget size is 30.42 lakh crore. So forget about lakh crore. Just imagine that the budget expenditure, that is budget size, is 30 rupees. And what is the revenue? So revenue is 24 lakh crore approximately. So it means, if suppose that this is your expenditure and this is your revenue, then your budget will be in deficit of 6 rupees. So you can understand that that deficit of a revenue of 6 rupees will be covered by borrowings and these borrowings are in terms of the fiscal deficit. So this is an important lesson here that mainly the expenditure and the revenue this time. So we can say the expenditure and the difference in the revenue is the fiscal deficit. So this is an important graph you can download this PDF from our mobile app of Ecoholics. Now moving forward. This is again very important for the examination purpose, especially if you are preparing for the UPSC examination. These data uh, may seem to be very vital for your uh, question solving purpose. Now, if you see, this is the division of 1 rupee. So, generally, government always publish that division of 1 rupee. Now, 18% of that, it means 18 paisa of 1 rupee or 18% of total, this 100% of pie chart comes from corporate income tax, CIT. So, that is those corporates that they are actually uh, depositing taxes that will come at 18%. Income tax from the individuals, so this is from individuals, comes at 17% of the total revenue. Custom duty is 4%. Union excise duty is 7%, GST is 18%, non-tax revenue is important. Here non-tax revenue means the type of revenue like for example the government fees, fines, the user charges by the government if government is providing any services. So whatever the revenue that they are earning that does not come from the taxation part like this. And we have non-debt capital receipts, non-debt capital receipts, it means those kind of capital that government has been receiving that is not creating any kind of debt. That means no burden of repayment like RBI surplus transfer to government of India that is non-debt capital receipt because government of India got certain capital from RBI and that too in the form of non-debt it means government doesn't have to repay next is borrowing and other liabilities so borrowing other liabilities simple the main liabilities regarding the public borrowing or public debt so this is an important uh, element under borrowing and liability now how it is important for examination purpose this is important for examination purpose because they may ask about the chronology like for example Suppose the question is consider the following statement and arrange them in the chronological order or arrange the taxes which fetches more revenue. So here the important thing is GST and CIT stands at 18%, 18% then comes the personal income tax, then comes the union excise duty, then comes the custom duty. So this is the perfect chronology. So you have to remember this 18% this is also 18% then 17 7 and 4 so these kind of things may ask in the examination so the next we have with us is the expenditure now what's the main expenditure here is the interest payments so almost 18% of what government spends goes to the interest payments of outstanding and other loans that government is having the expenditure on defense is 8% of the total expenditure. It means that 30 lakh crore approximately was the total expenditure. Of that, 8% goes to defense. On the same lines, subsidy takes about 6% of the total expenditure. Finance commission and other transfers goes to the states at 10%. Because finance commission 
under article 280 that constituted by the president of india that distributes or devolve the transfer of resources so this is suppose the center so center gives money to the states for carrying out certain activities this is called vertical devolution and horizontal devolution is among these states so suppose this is the state called maharashtra this is karnataka and this is suppose odisha so what is the main criteria to devolve these kind of funds so this depends on the finance commission formula the other we have is 20 percent that is state share and taxes or duties because suppose for example igst integrated gst so that actually distributes between center and the states so these kind of things obviously is important to distribute among the states six percent goes to pension and nine percent goes to the centrally sponsored schemes now centrally sponsored and sector sector scheme are two different things central sector schemes are the schemes that are carried out by the central government only their implementation policy making everything depends on the center but centrally sponsored schemes like manrega which is obviously drafted by center but implemented by the states so that is why it is centrally sponsored which means money comes from center but implemented by the state governments now next we have is the important deficits now these deficits are very important for ex examination purpose here we can say the most important is fiscal deficit which shows the borrowing now you know first of all you need to understand what are actuals what are budget estimates what are revised estimates and the budget estimates for the next year now you know that the budget came on 1st february 2020 now we are currently in fiscal 2019 and 20 so on 1st february we have published the data but the data is actually from 1st april to 31st december so from 1st april to 31st december that is why it is what we can say it is budget estimate and this is revised estimate so whenever we publish the budget obviously that budget is for the future year so for the current budget the estimate that fiscal deficit will remain at 3.5 percent of the gdp now the important thing that we need to understand that last year the same time when government announced the budget the budget estimated that fiscal deficit should be 3.3 percent but what is revised estimate it means from april 2019 to december 2019 that fiscal deficit was expected to be 3.3 percent but it had around 3.8 percent so that is a revised estimate it means what whatever we have estimated at the time of budget we have to revise it just after completing the nine months of that particular fiscal year the actual why actual they are publishing because 2018-19 is the financial year which has been completed the another type of deficit is revenue deficit so sometimes in the examination they ask to arrange chronological order of the fiscal deficit so this is the current data that you need to remember till the next year so the revenue deficit is 2.4 percent revenue deficit is simple revenue expenditure minus uh, the revenue that government is actually revenue receipts that government is actually getting so the revenue expenditure minus revenue receipts is called the revenue deficit it means government is not able to actually fulfill day-to-day -day expenditure with their day-to-day -day receipts that's why for day-to-day -day expenditure also government has to borrow money effective revenue deficit was introduced in the year 2011 by the then finance minister Pranam Mukherjee effective revenue deficit is obviously simple suppose for example center is giving money to the states for center it is obviously a revenue deficit because or revenue expenditure why because center is thinking that states are getting this money and center is not creating any assets as states may may do or may not but states suppose for example 100 rupees given by center to the states for the states suppose for 80 rupees 
they spent on certain schemes that is revenue expenditure but remaining 20 they will spend on certain creating assets so obviously this 20 is creating asset and this 20 rupees is obviously the part of capital expenditure but for the center this total whole 100 rupees is the revenue expenditure so that is why effective revenue deficit is simple whatever the grants given by center to the states except the grants that is is uh, used by states to create capital assets so that is effective revenue deficit which is effectively 1.5 percent it means the 1.5 percent all the uh, states in this particular country are spending money they are not creating assets primary deficit is important primary deficit is fiscal deficit minus interest payments so if your interest payments are more than obviously it goes uh, down and if it is greater then obviously it is beneficial for the uh, for the country so primary deficit another important indicator generally they ask the formula so that is fiscal deficit minus interest payment another source of financing fiscal deficit that we have is the important items so debt receipts what kind of debt re receipts that government is having so majority you can see from the figure that this is the biggest figure among these table like this so market borrowing is the major source of debt receipts then comes small savings then comes pf then other debts external debt sector so you can see that chronology is important again the market borrowing plays an important role in creating debts now deficit trends always this is a favorite question so a question of upsc that in upsc they sometimes ask uh, like in last five years fiscal deficit has been declining which of the following statement is correct so you can see that there's a declining trend from this point to this point we can say so they may ask that since 2012 fiscal deficit has been declining so the statement must be correct so in the same lines every deficit has been declining so just see the trend because in the examination i'm not saying that you should remember the data but if you see this graph it will stick in your mind that fiscal deficit has been declining now sources of deficit financing how the deficit must be financed by it means if there's a deficit how what is the source that we can finance that particular deficit so these are the important thing and this like security against the small savings so generally government borrows money on the securities against the small savings so this is the highest among all so you can see other like state provident fund other like this brown one that is other receipts internal debt and public accounts so the important here is that security against the small savings that's the biggest source of deficit financing now this is the total transfer to the states and the union territory so in lakh rupees lakh crore so this is estimated that the total transfer from the central government in the next financial year that is 2020 and 2021 will remain at 13.91 lakh crore the composition of the transfer to the states and the UT so what kind of composition that we are having in the like devolution is the process scheme related like centrally sponsored scheme and the finance commission grants so the biggest source is the devolution from the finance commission so 15th finance commission gave the recommendation that 41% of the net receipts should be transferred to the states. Now this is important part composition of the expenditure. So you can see the biggest block is of interest rate or sorry interest payments and the composition of expenditure it means the majority amount goes to paying just the interest. Then defense and subsidy is almost equal. So you can see we have seen in the uh, the pie chart the defense is around 8% subsidy is was around 6% you can see other differences uh, other blocks as well but here certain things like education like energy like we have urban development IT and telecom these are the things that are creating assets so these are important expenditure which is quite less we can say the another one is health also so these are quite less so we need to increase that 
so that more number of assets should be created. Now this is the trend of major items of the expenditure. So you can see the trends. So that is agriculture and allied activities. <coughs> it is going up. So everything is going up you can see. The most important agriculture, then transport, then rural development. So these are the three important pillars that we can say that government is spending to boost the economy. Now this is a trend in the tax receipts. This question they may ask like this is the direct tax and this is the indirect tax. So you can see in this budget, the direct tax receipts are more than indirect tax. Here we can say the again, previously the direct was more than indirect, but here at this particular point, they were almost at 50, 50. So obviously the indirect tax, if it is reducing, from the total tax receipt it is good because if you see the burden of indirect tax is obviously higher in comparison to the direct tax because direct tax is based on the the income level but indirect tax like 18 percent gst is same for the rich people for the middle class or for the poor people so these three categories you can say 18 percent gst is same for all but income tax that is a direct tax is obviously more for rich less for and almost nil for poor so that is why whenever you increase the ratio of direct tax to indirect tax obviously it gives more equality in the economy this is the net receipts of the central government so you can see that net center tax revenue this is the part of tax revenue that central government is give, uh, getting this is the part of non-tax revenue and this is non debt capital so major source of the income of the government of india is comes comes from tax the composition of expenditure again the central sector scheme and the other centrally uh, sector expenditure has been the highest among all so you can see that other grants are having less amount finance commission grants so the expenditure generally goes for the uh, schemes now this is the trend of capital expenditure which is very important because almost 12 percent of the total expenditure government actually devoted to capital expenditure so this is the budgetary support this is the iebr and this is ministry of railways with iebr so you can see that major amount comes from the iebr and this is like the major share then this is a small share again and this is we can say more or less a decent share so the in rupees crore and this is approximately will come here so government is spending more year by year you can see in 2015 16 16 17 goes on and it is constantly going up so it is a good sign and it is almost from the 6 lakh to 12 lakh almost a double in four or five years this is a good sign so i hope you enjoy this lecture and if you like this lecture please don't forget to like share and subscribe ecoholics and for that you can visit our website for more information that is www.ecoholics.in thank you so much